Hey guys, there are many things that I wish that I knew before I started investing money, okay? These are things that I'm gonna to chat to you about candidly, things that I know for certain that had I known them, they would have influenced my mindset in a slightly different way. They would have certainly stopped me making uh, mistakes along the journey and they would have accelerated the growth of wealth and our journey towards financial independence. So I'm gonna share with you five things that I wish I knew before I started investing, okay? This is a part of a list of 10 things that I recently wrote in a blog post called 10 Tips for Smarter Investing, which I'll put in the links below and above for you to check out. I'm gonna share five of them here today, so feel free to check out that blog post to read the remaining five, okay? My name is Ken of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. What we do on this channel is give you the tips, the insights, the practical hacks to help you work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy, okay? Let's chill out and let's talk about these things that I wish I knew. I've made myself here some peppermint tea and I'm chilling out in my studio as I think about and reflect on these points. It's my wish that these points will help you become a better and a much happier investor and a much richer investor over time. Okay, so number one is to only invest in what you understand, okay? Imagine this scenario, you walk into a cab and the cab driver gets really chatty. He or she's chatting to you and saying to you, hey, uh, a friend of mine is into cryptocurrencies and how they've invested into crypto and how they've made X or Y amount of money by investing into crypto. You come out of the cab and all of a sudden, he or she has sown a seed in your mind and you suddenly feel, wow, I need to start to invest in crypto as well, okay? This is not too uncommon uh, in the way that many people get started with all forms of investing, okay? Now, this is seriously almost foolish thinking in my opinion, okay? Because you should really only invest in things that you really understand and there's nothing wrong with crypto by itself. But my key question to you is, do you understand what you are actually investing your money into, okay? So my recommendation here is to thoroughly do your research because this is how you become, in effect, a master of the subject that you are getting involved with. In this case, investing your hard-earned money into something which you hopefully fully understand and expect to generate a real return for you over time. So there's one thing I want you to remember on the back of that first point, it's this. Investing is meant to be simple. Keep it that way and you'll enjoy this journey of investing your money. Okay, so the second one is to avoid looking at your portfolio very often. I heard about a study that Fidelity had carried out a while ago looking at investing accounts and which group of accounts had performed the best over time. And it was quite interesting to learn that the groups of people who had performed the best over the period of time were actually dead people, or essentially the people who were not looking at their investing accounts at all. One thing I know for certain is that you get emotionally drawn into the picture the more you spend time looking at your investing accounts. A lot of people who buy individual stocks particularly suffer from this because quite a lot of people don't buy stocks with a long-term horizon. So my best recommendation here is to think long-term. I'm gonna read you something from one of my favorite books. Uh, I'm gonna paraphrase John Bogle, uh, who wrote the book called The Little Book of Common Sense Investing, which I'll put in the links below for you to check out, okay? And this is really remarkable what this book says. I'm gonna paraphrase, and here it goes. And it says this, the way to wealth for those in the investing business, yeah, is to persuade their clients that, here's what they said to the clients, don't just stand there, do something, i.e., don't just like chill out, go stock picking, okay? This is what the people in the investment business want you and I to do. They want us to do something, to have some activity, to go sell or buy or do whatever, but to do some stock picking, okay? And here's what he says. 
But the way to wealth for their clients in the aggregate should be the opposite. And here's what they say, what he says. Don't do something, just stand there instead. So what he's saying there is, do not tinker with your portfolio at all. Instead, ride the index and let time do its work, okay? This is fascinating advice because it's almost counterintuitive. It's one of the harder things to do when it comes to investing, which is just to leave things alone and let time do the work. But I can guarantee you that if you took this mindset on board, it will most certainly work for you over time and help you build investing wealth. So the key point to remember here is to aim to look at your portfolio probably twice a year. Now I know that's difficult, but it will serve you very well if you are that person who develops that mental, that attitude of actually just, you know, putting the investing portfolio to the side and really only looking at it when you come to review your portfolio around once or twice per year. Okay, so the next one is to focus on owning the market. So essentially, you really want to focus on investing in funds that cover a broad spectrum of the market. So in the UK, for example, the FTSE All Share Index does the job of capturing, essentially, uh, the UK equities market. In the US, it's the Wheelshare 5000 index that does the job of capturing the entire market, including smaller and larger companies. And if you want a totally global capture, then you want to look at something like the MSCI World Index, because that does a good job of giving you global exposure. A light reminder on what an index is, an index is essentially a list of companies that represent a specific marketplace, okay? So when you are looking for funds that essentially help you to own the market, you want to look for terminologies such as total market or broad market specific indexes that will help you capture and own the market itself. So the smart tip to remember here is to focus on owning the market and also doing it consistently, i.e. investing into owning the whole market consistently every single month. We've done lots of videos on investing. I'll put in the links below and above uh, our videos looking at index funds versus ETFs. If you're somebody uh, who'd love to know what the differences are and get a better understanding for what those particular uh, asset areas are intended to help you to achieve. Okay, so the next one is to limit portfolio withdrawal. So for a lot of you watching this, your plans might be one day in the future to have early retirement or at least the option of early retirement, okay? A lot of people base their calculations around the 4% rule where they hope, for example, to be withdrawing 4% of their portfolio on an annual basis, okay? So one of the really important things to try to do, a way to almost near enough guarantee that you don't run out of time is to aim to do a lot less withdrawing from your portfolio. So for example, based on a 24,000 per annum income, for example, that you might need from your portfolio, you might typically, based on 4%, need a pot of 600,000 pounds. So being 24,000 divided by 4%, okay? You need 600K to be able to withdraw that level of income every year, okay? Now, if you say decided that you would withdraw 3% instead, which is a lot more prudent, and instead focused on reducing the cost of investing your money, giving your money enough firepower to work over time, you without a doubt give yourself enough of an opportunity for that money to last you for much longer because you're not only withdrawing a lot less over time, but you are also focused on reducing the costs of investing such that more of your money is at work and building wealth for you over time. So the top tip to remember here is, where possible, keep withdrawals from your portfolio as low as possible. But instead, focus on cost minimization to give your portfolio a much bigger chance of growing and building your wealth as the years pass by. 
Okay, so to go into the fifth point, I wanted to ask you a question. When I say the word investing, what do you think about typically? The chances are you probably think about the stock market, okay? And this is what most people think about when it comes to investing. So my fifth point here is that investing is a lot more than the stock market, okay? And this has really helped me. This is actually a really personal point because I had to really think about money and investing totally from a different perspective, simply by exposing myself to people who I'd seen build wealth over time. And a lot of these people didn't actually start by building their wealth through the stock market. They started by doing it through other asset classes, such as them starting their own business, okay? So the point I'm trying to make here is, when you think about investing, investing is actually a mindset thing, okay? You want to start to think about investing from the perspective of different asset classes. It might be that you are investing into business, and it's your hope that that business will give you two key elements of investing. It gives you an ongoing income, which might come in the form of, say, dividends over time, and it gives you a capital appreciation because your business starts to grow in value over time. It might be that you invest uh, into, say, property, for example, and that property, again, gives you, say, rental income, combined with the annual appreciation in value of that specific asset class, okay? Because these, the combination of the ongoing income and the appreciation over time combined, give you your total return that you are getting from that asset class. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. There are so many different options that you can explore when it comes to actually investing your money. And the more you are able to think from that perspective of the ROI, the return on investment, the more you are able to then think, ah, okay, so there are different things that I could actually expose my money to, I'm then able to start to look at these various things as deals, as opportunities, and say, actually, I'm gonna explore this particular deal because of A, B, C, or I'm gonna explore that particular one because of X, Y, and Z. You would, in effect, start to make a case for your investing, okay? So rather than the kind of plain vanilla way of going, okay, yep, yeah, I'm gonna chuck my money into the stock market, you're able to understand that different assets can have different roles within a portfolio. And the more confident you are about what role each asset plays within a portfolio, the more you become a better investor over time and understand what assets you need specifically for you on your journey towards financial independence. Because without a doubt, it will be different for every single person, okay? So as an example, we teach people how to start their own impactful blogs. Blogs, for example, that will make them money as well as help them to create a business and have impact in the world over time. That in itself is a form of an investment, okay? But it's an investment this time into a digital asset, okay? So I hope this point sticks with you, which is when you think about investing, I'd love for you to think about investing way beyond the stock market, okay? Although the stock market is great for automating the growth of your money, there are other forms of investment that will offer you, offer you even better returns and whilst giving you diversification in your portfolio over time. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video on the things I wish I knew before I started investing money. Like I said, I've created a blog post called 10 Tips for Smarter Investing, which you can check out in the links below or above uh, to kind of look at the various other things that I wish I knew uh, that will help you, if you understood them, to do investing a lot happily, to kind of acquire the knowledge over time, and most importantly, to build wealth and accelerate your journey towards financial independence. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button because it really helps to encourage a ton more people to watch and engage with our videos. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. We welcome you to The Humble Penny. Hit that subscribe button as well as the notifications bell so you get notified when we publish on a Tuesday as well as a Thursday. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What do you personally wish you had known before you started to invest your own money, okay? Drop it in the comments and let us know. And I'd love to jump in there 
and you know engage with you and chat with you and discuss some of these ideas okay thank you so much for watching this video today and i look forward to seeing you again on our next one take care and bye for now